Jim Cardock and Sven Mattison were sitting at a bar in Toronto. They had attended a very important meeting that lasted all day and they were tired. The subject of the meeting was a new technology which envisioned the close-range wireless communication of mobile devices with personal computers. The year was 1996. Computers and mobile devices were developing at an incredible rate, and connecting these two separate worlds using a wireless method was the biggest goal of tech companies. The meeting that Cardock and Mattison had attended was very important for the future of the new technology. The major tech companies had recently realized that developing different architectures was unnecessarily increasing the cost. The way to prevent this was to cooperate, and today's meeting was the first step in that direction. It was the first meeting of the major tech companies as a joint working group. Cardock and Mattison were the representatives of Intel and Ericsson. After talking about the meeting for a while, their conversation shifted to other topics. They found themselves chatting about Scandinavian history. Jim Cardock, an American engineer, was particularly keen on this subject. That was why, a name he heard from Mattison caught his attention. Harold Bluetooth. Harold Bluetooth was an ancient Danish king. During his reign, he had managed to unite Norway and Denmark. Cardock thought that they had a similar goal. They were also trying to combine personal computers and mobile devices to create a single wireless kingdom. This idea stuck in his mind. He became so obsessed with it that when he returned to his country, he proposed Bluetooth as the name of the new technology. His colleagues in Intel found the proposal repulsive. No one wanted to name one of the greatest technological breakthroughs of history after a dead Danish king. The meaning of the name was also troublesome. Bluetooth would be more fitting for a dentist's office rather than a technology that would change the world. Jim Cardock didn't give up. He convinced Intel and other companies in the working group to use Bluetooth as the codename for the project. The real name would be determined later. That was enough for him. While engineers and software developers of the working group created the technical infrastructure of the new technology, marketing departments started working on branding. It took months and countless meetings to find a name but at last, PAN was accepted as the name of the new technology. An abbreviation of the words Personal Area Network, PAN would perfectly represent the aim and capabilities of this major invention. The name Bluetooth which had been seen as a bad joke was long forgotten. It all changed three weeks before the official launch. Up to that point, no one had thought to check the online availability of PAN trademark. It was pure luck that someone remembered controlling it, and the result was shocking. PAN was already registered. A new name should have been found but there was no time for such an endeavor. After a crisis meeting, IBM, Ericsson, Nokia, Intel, and Toshiba decided to introduce the new technology under Bluetooth name. A logo consisting of the initials of the name Harold Bluetooth in runic alphabet was prepared. This was an interim solution, and the real name of the new tech would be decided later. The tech giants never found a chance to find a new name for their magical technology. As soon as it was shared with public in 1998, the Bluetooth name gained great popularity and became the permanent name of the new wireless technology. Thus, the name of a dead Danish king, suggested by an engineer with a keen interest in Scandinavian history, became the name of one of the greatest technological creations of history.